Well, good morning, everybody. This is John from Clark Family Outdoors, and today we're uh, in the bee yard, or actually going to make a bee run. I got a call late last night via Facebook that uh, somebody had some bees in their ch in their fireplace. I guess they came in the chimney, kind of swarmed in. Um, the gentleman works, you know, third shift, so he wasn't sure. So he got home this morning about 6.30 and shot me a, a video that there's still a few bees flying around. My guess is the major swarm's gone and maybe there's a few stragglers going around, but you know, we'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and make the drive. I would normally not do, waste my time on the drive. Uh, it's in Anderson, Indiana, so you know, about an hour away. But my brother and his family are in Anderson, Indiana, so I'll go ahead and and uh, make that trip, and if it turns out to be no, uh, basically useless for me, I mean, there's no bees left or no swarm, that's okay, I may stop by and see my brother and his family, but I'll show you what else I've been doing this morning. Um, got out here about six o'clock, 6.15, and started working in the yard. Uh, making, uh, putting some second coats on some of my hive uh, bottom boards. So I'll show you what I've got. One of the one of the problems we're dealing with right now, and uh, with lo high lumber prices, is it's really expensive to make hive bottom boards. And woodenware, unfortunately, if you want to grow your apiary, you have to have the appropriate amount of, of uh, woodenware. So I've made a few different varieties of bottom boards for, the, and I, I put another coat of paint on this. So some some of them sweat. Um, but you know, you definitely want to make sure when you have plywood or any wood, actually, you want to make sure that all the grain is covered up, all the end grain is covered up deep with paint to protect it and give it plenty of longevity. I mean, these high bottom boards can can use 10, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. I've got some that are probably older than that, but um, my apiary is growing, and so I needed some more high bottom boards. So I, I, I did these, built these yesterday, a couple layers of paint on there. And a couple different design patterns. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do from now on, uh, just to reduce expense and save time. And I'll show you how I made that bottom board. When we get back, I may update the video. But right now, I'm getting ready to load up the uh, the B Mobile, and we're heading down to Anderson, Indiana. In Madison County, it's really easy to tell when we leave Grant County and enter Madison County because Madison County has the wind farm. Okay, so we made it up here. We've got a group of bees right there in the chimney. I can't tell if there's more down there or not. They were no longer by the fireplace. So we're just gonna suck that small group out here and see if the other bees start moving. We got them all off the side, but I can't tell if there's more down there or not. Without starting a fire, I don't know how we're going to shove them up from the fireplace area if they're still down there. Or it could have just been a very, very, very small swarm. So this is now the third time I've used this uh, handy-dandy BVAC. I love it. I will keep using it forever. It is incredibly handy, incredibly easy, um, safe on the bees. We're going to light a little fire down in the fireplace and see if we can't smoke some of them out of there. Because there's not enough at the top. They're still running up and down, so I know we've got more bees. The question is, how do we get them out of there? I'm trying to smoke them out, but they're not coming up, so I don't know. So we did our best to smoke them out and see if we couldn't drive them up, whatever bees remained down in there, but. Uh, there just weren't a whole lot of bees coming up. There's several flying around. Uh, when I say several, I mean two or three. And I'm thinking they're just scout bees trying to tell those bees where to go, where the swarm went to. But I don't know. We don't see many of them rolling out of the chimney like we expected. Well, it wasn't a total bust. We've got about 100 bees from the uh, swarm and found a nice little tomato stand on the way home. So I'm getting a couple cherry tomatoes for my wife. Well, sorry about the time delay on everything, folks. Um, it's about, uh, it was about 10 o'clock and the weather's beautiful. Uh, bees are out, you know, getting, you know, collecting nectar, collecting pollen, everything that bees do. And I uh, decided to take the opportunity to go ahead and do some weed eating around the uh, bee yard. And I was wearing shorts and a t-shirt and had my, my goggles on for weed eating purposes. And well, anyway, one of my hives didn't quite enjoy the weed eater noise. so. 
they started chasing after me. I just dropped the weed eater in the yard and <laughs> ran inside the house. And, and since I know there's upset bees out here, I'm not taking any chances, so that's why I'm suited up. Uh, these bees seem to be pretty gentle, but I know the hive over that way is not. And so if they're still flying about, I don't want to take any chances. It got stung uh, four or five times, one in the arm, one in the eyebrow, one in the neck, and a couple in the leg. So I uh, decided I'm just going to put on some jeans and a suit, and we're going to do this and break it up now. Um, we only received, we got about 100 bees roughly from the swarm out of the Anderson chimney, and uh, don't think they're going to make it on their own. So I'm going to have to incorporate them in another hive. I've got to do a, a nice good once over to make sure there's no virgins in there. Uh, I don't think there's a mated queen. I, I would have seen her, but could be that I missed the virgin um, in that small amount. But uh, I'll take a closer look here in a few. But first, we're going to break down one of these nuke boxes.